Okay, so some people have asked me about creating your own units. Um, and so when you create your own unit, there are a lot of things that you need to take into account. Um, does it have special abilities? Does it have special attributes, etc.? Is it something completely different than what we've seen in the game? Or is it something that's really similar? Now, I'm going to start with kind of the easiest, which is going to be dealing with something that is already in the game, basically. So, for example, I really like Chameleon Stalkers. Now, um, in Warhammer 2, they were actually my favorite units. So I want to bring them into more factions, or at least a character that, character that works like them. Essentially, I really like uh, the shock infantry concept. And this kind of like light skirmisher unit is a really cool concept to me, and I just really want to put it into as many factions as possible. The other great thing is it's actually a pretty low tier unit. So uh, that's also a nice aspect of it. So I don't feel like it's breaking the game in any way. Uh, because I don't really like to like mess with the balance of games. So I'm going to go over how that mod is created, but I'm not going to show the whole process. I'm going to show you and explain to you all the different tables I used, um, because otherwise this video would be very, very long, and it's already going to be long enough just doing that. So first of all, um, if we take a look at the models that I created, basically what I did was I went in and I wanted to make ones for Keyslave. And so I decided to make a unit of all women um, modeled after the Kosar bodies, because they are the mixed gender units with women Kosars. <clears throat> and I like that kind of style. So first of all, what I did was I went through and modified uh, the three Dervish bodies. That way, essentially, not major changes. All I really did was do what I did in the Tsar Guard with guns, in that I added guns to the bodies in different spots and animated them as such. So if you look here, we have it linked to her uh, bandolier there. OK, so then what I did was there's already three women heads. And so Warhammer 2 had a maximum of five heads or five randomizations that it could do, so I made two more. Warhammer 3 has the same thing. If you notice, it's based on the Archer Head 4, which is the first woman head, and then a Ice Guard mask. And I had to delete some things to make it so it didn't clip. <clears throat> so, did the same thing for the bearskin hat one. Okay, so now I have five heads and three bodies. Now, one thing to note is that depending on your graphic settings in Warhammer 3, the randomization is limited by graphic settings. So at like medium unit quality, I know that there's only three showing. So the first three that you show in your randomization will be those ones. So basically, line it up in your favorite models to your least favorite models, or whatever. Um, that way, you get a good randomization, uh, regardless of your graphic settings. OK, so once I have those models created, and again, you can watch my other videos for that, I go to Rusted Pack File Manager, and I import them into it. So we create a new pack file, only I'm going to open mine. And we're going to load them into here. So we're going to add them from the asset editor that I saved. And so all three of them are in the game here. Then what I do is I import a variant mesh definition. It doesn't really matter which one, but I usually choose one that's similar to what I'm going to be going with. So we right click, go to data, and we're going to look for variants. Now, more likely than not, this might be a variants three since it's a Warhammer three. So I'm looking for like COSARs, variant mesh definition. So there's our COSAR variant mesh. So I have my COSAR, and I kind of use that as a reference um, or whatever model we want. And I can right click on it and rename it to COSAR Stalker, which is what everything is going to be named in this thing. So I've already done that. And you can see my COSAR Stalker. So I have five heads ordered in the order that I like them. And then um, the three bodies. I have the Archer Sword, so the Keyslave Sword, so it kind of matches that. And then I'm not sure if this is going to stick forever, but my weapon five. So weapon two is your one-handed weapons, and weapon five here is the gun in their offhand. 
<clears throat> the I'm using the Fleet Admiral pistol uh, just because it's scaled correctly. The Kislev ones are way too big. I might scale some down for this eventually, but as is, that's good enough for the time being. Okay, now what we want to do is we're going to go to our UI. So in this case, you go to add from pack file, and this is going to be in our data. So I kind of work backwards where I do the visual stuff first, and then I get the tables working. So in this, we have UI, and you have units, and you have icons, info picks, and min spec portholes. I do the same thing where I import something. It doesn't really matter what. Um, and then I rename it into the name that I want, Kosar Stalker, Kosar Stalker, and Kosar Stalker. The reason I import these um, from previous ones is so that I have the size down and then I can copy the style. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. As you see, I'm not super great at Photoshop, um, but I try and match it as much as possible to the theme of the game. And just keep in mind that just try to match it a little bit. As long as you sell that concept a little bit, it's going to be OK. Um, you know, if you're better at Photoshop, then cool. That's always great. That always makes it look nicer. OK, so we have all of our icons. And again, notice they're all named kosarstalker.png of differing size, depending on what type that they are. OK, so that's the visual stuff taken care of. Now we're going to go to the database. And I'm going to walk you through. Uh, the database things that I use, <clears throat> and there's a lot for this one, but there's more, and I'll talk about the ones as well that you could look into. Again, this isn't a comprehensive table list, but anyway. So I'm going to go through order by alphabet, okay? Some people work by uh, starting at like unit variance, variance, and land table, land units and main units table, and then kind of work their way around. I actually just add things from previous unit packs. So once I've made a unit, I use that as a template for all future ones. And then if there's more stuff that I need, I just add more tables to it. Um, and so it kind of just depends on the unit. But my very first one I made was a pain. And I had the added uh, issue of trying to do it for a faction that's not not as simple so you have the beastmen was my first unit i made and you have to consider the fact that the beastmen also have to have a way to like limit how many they can hire but then also upgrade how many they can get with their uh research and stuff so anyway depending on it uh you have to do that but here with kisaliv it's not too bad so let's go through in alphabetical order Audio voiceover actor groups. This is the first time I've ever used this, and it was in this table or in this mod. <clears throat> and the reason why is because Kislev has mixed units, and it has female units like the Ice Guards or the um, like Zarina and stuff like that. But they all say what they are, and I don't want them to say that. I want them to be more similar to the Kosars. And so I took the mixed unit voice of the Kosars, the um, dervishes or whatever, they're, they're light cavalry. And I have this as a reference just so you can see it. That's the Kislev mixed. The first five are male and the next four are female. So because I want an all female unit, what I did was create a new one. So I added a new table. I deleted everything else. So I just have this one. Kislev Woman is what I named it. Now, this is the only one that I named special. All others are named Kosar Stalker. And the reason I did that is because that way in the future, when I come back uh, and maybe want to make another all-female unit for Kislev, I already have this created, so I could just import this one. So um, anyway, you just give it a name. doesn't matter what it, you call it, but I try and name it somewhat descriptive. And then I just put the first four voice actors as this one. If I wanted to delete some, I could, but... Four was good, so it's as much as I could get. OK, now battle entities. This sets up a, a lot of things like acceleration, deceleration, charge speed, how fast they can run, um, where they charge from, how big they are, their height, etc. What I did was I just took the Chameleon Stalker as my reference and um, copied everything from it. So I have it named Kosar Stalker. This is mine. 
And again, you'll see that I name everything the same. And the reason I do that is to make it easy so that when I'm calling to something, whether it's a weapon, whether it's a ranged weapon, whether it's the unit itself, whether it's its variant, I don't have to think, well, which one is it? It's Kosar Soccer every time. Okay. So if you look, everything is the same. There's only a few changes. Audio entity type, I added Warhammer Human Female instead of the Skinks audio type. I don't know what that really does. Potentially like audio when they get hit or something, maybe. Um, so I just matched it to another unit um, that was a female unit. Probably the uh, Ice Guards. And everything else is exact copy of the Chameleon Stalker. Okay, building units allowed table. Now what this does is this tells us where we can hire the Kosar Stalker. So you can set this to any building in the game. I considered making it set to like the Sacred Woods or something like that, but then decided against it just um, because then only like the, the capital cities can't do that or whatever because they're different buildings anyway so i just stuck with calvary because i thought it made the most sense because these guys are kind of like uh step warriors as well so you have keyslift calvary 2 and keyslift calvary 3. if you need to find what the names of the buildings are they're in the table in data pack just all of these are in data and then database and you can mouse over this to see where it comes from. It's building underscore levels. So this gives me an idea too. I, I use this sometimes where I mouse over like where these things are. So I know which tables I need to add in case of situations. Okay, so two and three. Now, something to note about this is that if you want them hireable in, at tier two, you have it here, Kosar Stalker, Calvary two, but then you have to do it for Calvary three as well and any other upgrades because if I don't do that, then once you upgrade to Cavalry 3, it won't, they won't be able to be hired anymore. So it's just something to be aware of. The other thing to note is that some tables require a unique key. So you just have to create a key for these two things. It doesn't matter what it is, it just has to be unique. So I try and make something very different from what I see in the other keys. And it's worked out so far, just doing things at random. Okay. Now, campaign map attrition. This tells us which attritions on the campaign map this unit is immune to, snow, vampire territory. What I did was look up other Kislevite faction guys and see, okay, well, what were they immune to? These two. So that's all they have. And you can add more if you want. Um, military generator unit, unit quality. So this basically assigns what I believe, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure, is the auto resolve. Um, I'm like 98% sure. Um, and so all I did was take Chameleon Stalkers and use the same quality for my Kosar Stalkers. That's it. 10, which is pretty darn low, just so you know. All right, culture to battle animation. Now, depending on your mod, you may or may not need this, but for me, I'm using, I initially wanted to use the Empire Sword Pistol animation, but I was having issues with that, but I just left that in, um, and I ended up using the Saratosa Free Company, so basically I was looking for an animation that was sword and gun simultaneously. So either one of these will work. For some reason in Warhammer 3, I don't know why, but this is not working correctly. There is like a time in the animation where they'll just put the guns onto their hip and then suddenly the guns will reappear on their right uh, in their left hand. So it's weird, so I just went with this one. Okay, so basically you need to have this if you, this is what sets animations to different factions. So Kislev now has these. If you don't do that, your characters won't animate regardless of what, you know, if you give them an animation that's not added in their culture or not already from their culture. So if it's already in their culture, then you don't have to worry about it, but otherwise you do. Something to note is that the game, when you go into a battle, loads the animations of each faction. And so if you do a battle where um, maybe you're fighting against the uh, Pirates of the Coast, right? and your characters have the Saratosa Free Company, but you didn't link it in this, you didn't add it to Keyslev, it would actually work as long as you were fighting the pirates because it just loaded that animation in for that battle. But if you then fight, say, the Dark Elves, it wouldn't work anymore. That's just some little thing that I noticed for myself when I was first doing animations. Um, so, you know, that was a mistake I was running into. Okay, 
let's now talk about land units tables. One of the more important ones, to be honest, for setting like stats and stuff like that. So basically, I have a few uh, different units here as references. I have some Kosovites. Um, I have the Empire Free Company, which is kind of what I'm basing my kind of style on. And then I have my Chameleon Stalkers for my stats. So here's my unit, again, Kosar Stalker. And then we have our short description text, Kosar Stalker. The long historical description text or whatever, I just pulled from the Kosovite Dervishes, which is why I'm using, um, I have that as a reference. The historical description isn't as, as important, so I just copied one that was similar to it. I could have written my own, but nah, no need. Okay, otherwise it's the same as the Chameleon Stalkers for the most part. Again, because I created my own entity, I have Kosar Stalker entity. My animation, I'm using the Saratosa Free Company animation, which again came from the Culture of Battle. Um, my spacing, everything, that's the same as the uh, Chameleon Stalkers. Now, my primary missile weapon, I'm not using blowpipes. I'm going to use my own special gun, which is going to work exactly the same, but sound like a gun. So I created one called Kosar Stalker, and you'll see that in just a second. I also did the same in melee weapon. I created a melee weapon. Since they're using swords, it's going to be different from a skink club. Uh, I want the audio to match that of a sword, so I have to create my own primary melee weapon as well. Um, now the attribute group, this is an important one. I just have the attributes of the Chameleon Stalkers, makes it easy, but this table is something that gives them like uh, stock and stuff like that. So we'll go over that at the end as like an additional table that you'll probably use when you're creating units. But because I'm copying another unit, I'm just using their attributes. I don't have to mess with this. But if you mouse over it, unit attributes, groups, group name, this tells me where those attributes are found. Okay, now let's see. I made sure the AI usage is flankers. And um, otherwise, yeah, it's all the same as the Chameleon Stalkers. Okay, now main units table. Now main units table, this is the unit name, Kosar Stalker. And again, I have some guys as references. Uh, Kosar Stalker is the land unit that's from this table. It's again matching the, the Chameleon Stalkers. This campaign cap tells you how many you can hire. Negative one means unlimited, zero means zero. One means you can only hire one, etc. All right, now one thing to note is that you need a unique index. So you need to create a unique name here, uh, or number, I should say, a unique number. Then the only real difference is that the audio voiceover culture is Keyslev instead of Lizardmen, and the UI unit group is Keyslev's Pistol Axe Infantry. I could have done Chameleon Stalkers, it would have worked similarly, but then the little icon with like the cross swords and stuff would look like a club and a blow dart and i wanted it to look something more what they were using it's going to show an axe and a gun which isn't perfect but the like missile infantry pistols that the um the empire's free company are will just show as a pistol and then we'll also end up in as a ranged unit in like custom battles and i want them to be their melee units so i want them in there but I did use that as a reference for the Empire Soldier 15 degree porthole camera. Essentially, I find a character who has the same general height as the units that I'm creating and take their porthole. All right. The other change I made from the stalker is that I have my audio voice actor group, the first table I created, Keith's Live Woman. Okay. So that's that taken care of. Now we're talking about the, the weapons. I mentioned that in land units tables, I'm creating my own weapons. So I had the skink poison, skink club poison, which is the one that the stalkers use um, as a reference. And here's my Kosar stalker sword. Again, everything's the same. The difference is it's a sword and the audio type is a sword. Everything else is exactly the same. I want it to be, again, I'm creating that character, but these all determine what kind of damage that weapon does and where does it get bonus versus things? Is it longer than other weapons? Can it splash, etc. All right, missile weapons table now. Now this just creates the missile weapon. The projectile actually sets what it's shooting. So here I have the Chameleon Stalkers as reference and then an armored Kosar pistol as reference. So my weapon is Kosar Stalker. It's a precursor weapon. There's not a lot of those in the game, but that's the blowpipe. Essentially, this means that your character will not shoot. 
uh, unless you charge them. So when you attack the unit, that's when they shoot it. It's a precursor to their melee attack. Um, and so they'll use it like the chameleon stalkers do. And then the projectile is Kosar Stalker again. That's going to be in projectile table. You'll see that in a sec. Audio type of the gun, pistol instead of blowpipe. That's why I had to create my own is so that it has the correct audio type. And visual, but we'll see that in projectiles. So the projectiles actually sets the stats of the gun, excluding how many bullets you have and um, your accuracy, I think. I think those are the those are affected in your land units table, but um, everything else about the ranged damage and stuff is dependent on the projectiles. So we have Kosar Stalker, and again I have the blowpipe as a reference. So the only difference I'm using a musket instead of arrows. Um, oh, marksman bonus is right there. Mm, so I don't remember what the other one is in land tables, but whatever. Okay, projectile display is where I changed it. So it shoots a bullet instead of the blow blowpipe dart. And the projectile audio is a bullet. One other thing to note that I changed is right here, it can damage vehicles. Um, the reason I did that is it seemed that every other range unit, at least that I briefly looked at in the projectiles in Warhammer 3 could damage vehicles. So I don't know if that's a thing that they added in Warhammer 3 where all the range units do that or not but I didn't think it would really change that much of a difference. So it can damage vehicles with the ranged. Okay. Now UI unit bullet point. Okay, so this one sets no changes in game, uh, like stat wise, all it does is give them the little bullet points that describe what the unit does uh, for people who are kind of looking at it. So sometimes they're kind of misleading. It's like, oh, um, like high damage or maybe like more hit points than normal and stuff. This one is Chameleon Dodge Precursor Missile and Vanguard Deployment. Basically, I just searched for uh, the um, Chameleon Stalker and then replaced the four UI bullet points that they have with Kosar Stalker. That's it. So it's it is described exactly the same. Now, unit short description text, all I did was Kosar Stalker. This is going to set that I can now call in my um, my units table that I had that was like short description, Kosar Stalker. This sets the the um, the link to the text, which we'll talk about near the end. Notice it's exactly it's just Chameleon Stalkers. It's just Kosar Stalker. Okay. Unit set to unit junctions. Now, what this does, this is a really important table if you want to make your unit mod good. Okay, and that is the units get upgraded in the game from things like technology and uh, your heroes uh, have the, the skills that improve certain units or whatever. Those are dependent on these unit junctions tables. All I did was I went and looked for COSARs and COSAR, armored COSARs and pulled them and set their unit record to COSAR stalker. So basically anything that affects infantry, mounted and monsters of Kislev will also affect my Kosar Stalkers. Anything that affects infantry and mounted will also affect my Kosar Stalkers. And then anything that affects infantry will affect my Kosar Stalkers. So depending on how broad of a situation, we get that. I also linked it as far as like hero. So the hero talents are kind of these ones, like rank seven here, armored Kosars, Kosars, and Strutzi. These guys are the um, kind of skills that um, the lords get and upgrade them. And so I basically just choose one rank seven that works. Though sometimes, depending on the faction, I might do two if like I'm creating a character like this one that has some ranged and some melee capabilities. Um, and I want them to get both of those bonuses. This one though already has armored Kosars and those guys already get bonuses to like melee and range. So I thought this was a good one. But basically you're just trying to match it. Now a few things I'm gonna delete is going to be my multiplayer cap range units because this is just a COSAR one. And I also have it specifically if it affects COSAR only, then it's going to affect them because they're kind of COSARs anyway. But um, the range unit cap for multiplayer, who cares uh, in general? Like that's not all that important because you're not playing uh, those kind of battles anyway with other players where you if you're worried about balancing with like multiplayer caps, who cares about this? You shouldn't be using custom units anyway, probably, but whatever. Okay, so 
again, what you do is you just look for units in your faction that are similar to it and you want to upgrade alongside of it. All right, so now unit variance tables. This just sets up kind of a link to a bunch of different tables. So I just used this as my reference, but really the name of my unit variant, which I can then change like colors and stuff like that. So if you see this, fields that reference this column are like the variant colors and stuff. But COSAR Stalker, the unit, which is land units table, COSAR Stalker, the variant, which is variance tables, COSAR Stalker, the unit card, which is my little picture in the UI here, okay? That is COSAR Stalker. That's why I keep everything the same name. So I don't have to think about what are they named? Who cares? COSAR Stalker. All right, now units to custom battle permission table. Now this allows you to hire this unit in the custom battles. It's not horribly important for say a campaign, but you know, you wanna be able to also play them in a custom battle if you want. So I linked it, COSAR Stalker, Keyslip. And then I followed the same stats as the Chameleon Stalkers. All right, units to, un uh, to grouping military permission. This enables COSAR Stalkers to be hired by Keyslip, the faction. Without it, you can't hire it, even if it's linked to their building. All right, variance table. Now this is where you get like sizing and stuff. So basically I pulled the COSARs as a reference and the Chameleon Stalkers. I didn't really need the Chameleon Stalkers as a reference. I really just need the COSARs. So my variant file name, COSAR Stalker. Again, that comes from my variant meshes. So that's my variant mesh definition. This is how we link it basically to our unit. Um, the scale is 100% is the normal height of whatever like skeleton you're using. A scale of 0.95, which the other COSARs use, means that they're a little below average height. And um, since it's all woman group, then I felt like, yeah, that seems reasonable. I could have dropped it even more, but I think this is fine. Then the scale variation means that this goes up or down 5% from here. I could change it to like 15% if I want, in which case you get really huge differences in heights in one unit. But this just makes sure that all the units, or 50%, that's a little high. This just makes sure that all the units um, have a little bit of variation in height so that it doesn't look like a unified group. In this case, I don't know why the chameleon stalkers don't have that. Maybe there's some lore to it. Anyway, the low poly file name, I just took a low poly, an imposter of um, the COSARs to use as my low poly. Basically, when you're zoomed really far out, it has a low poly. Um, you could probably just use... Um, you know, a normal rigid model that you have if you want. Uh, but this is just what it is. So the variant file name here, um, and then you have this low poly. I Like I said, I generally just use something that already exists in game that's close. Doesn't really matter that much. All right, um, so that is our database. There's a lot of tables to it. And like I said, there's more now. We'll come back to some other special ones that you might come into contact when you're making your own units, but let's finish this one up with text. I modified two texts. The first is the name. This is important for making sure your unit has a name in game. You need two table things here, okay? You need your key, land unit's concealed name, COSAR Stalker. So basically this name here, COSAR Stalker, is the name of the unit. And no matter what you name your units, they have to, be preceded by this land units concealed name underscore. Then you put the name. Same thing here. This is the on-screen name, but it has to proceed with this before it gets into the name of your unit. Then I have the text, COSAR Stalker, and my concealed name, don't need it. You could give another name if you want. Basically, um, you have like COSAR Stalker, and then you have something underneath it that it would you could maybe get the same or something different. It doesn't really matter. Um, but most of them always have like a hidden one, like just nothing. So I don't, I've never seen a concealed one in this. Maybe it's a leftover from one of the other games. All right, so now we have the uh, description short text. So here we have, um, again, the key, just like in the other one with the text, the text has weird things where it's not just COSAR stalker like the rest. It has to precede um, your name of your uh, short text has to come before this. You have this unit description, short text, text, Warhammer 3, main unit, short text, underscore, then you put in the name of it, COSAR Stalker. And you can write your little text. Now, once you have your land units, um, well, 
uh, saved or uh, edited, you want to uh, rename it. In this case, I, it's landunits.lock. Uh, and um, I just give it a name more specific to my unit. So like, I'm going to say, um, like, Keith live stalker underscore. I could have called it Cos, uh, Cosar stalker. I already have changed it, but my mass mustachio MM is kind of my generic before I finalize it. Um, anyway, doesn't really matter. You just want to make it so that it's going to be different from somebody else's mod so that they don't overlap. Um, so if you notice, I did the same thing for each of these tables. I'm also going to go through and delete any duplicates I don't need. So all my reference things, I'm going to delete um, just so that it's it doesn't over or it doesn't like mess with other mods essentially. So um, we only have the things that I actually made changes to. Okay, now one thing to note is where in the world the text is located. It's in add from pack file. It's going to be local dot um, English. So probably local dot uh, local English three probably since it's Warhammer three and these guys are units from Warhammer three. But it's from either of these, depending on what language you're going to do it in. Canadian? Just kidding. I know it's Chinese. OK, so anyway, so um, depending on what language, and you might want to be able to make it uh, work with other languages as well. Personally, I don't care. All right. Um, so though when people have come on and asked me for it, I will I'll add it for their language if they'll tell me what they want me to add it to. OK, so that's our mod taken care of. All I have to do now is save my pack file manager, or save this in pack file manager, whatever. Um, and then I need to, it's saved in my data pack. And I'm going to create a 256 by 256 PNG that is a picture named exactly the same. And then I can upload it to the workshop and do everything else like I've shown you in other videos. Now, one thing I want to note, though, before I finish up with this is that depending on your units, you might have to add more tables. And some of the big ones are going to be dealing with attributes and abilities. Now, when it comes to abilities, um, there's a lot more to it than I'm going to talk about, but I want to at least point out where you can find it. So first off, let's look at something here. The way I learned how to do some of these was because of the uh, guides from uh, Chryswar. I would say that they are useful references for me. They're kind of a struggle to follow if you're new to it. It's definitely a struggle. I don't know that it's really set up super well for somebody who knows nothing about it. The, imp the idea is to do that, but I don't think it works exactly like that. Um, but she or he or they, I don't know who, but Chryswar is quite good about answering questions. So but like I said, I, I use this as a reference if I'm going, OK, well, dang, which table is that that does what I'm looking for? I'll look it up. And there's um, he, she, or they have also uh, created other guides as well that can be useful. So just something to be aware of. You can always take a look at those things. So things like the one I always forget is like how to change what level the ability is unlocked at in like um, talents and stuff. So that's something I always have to look up on one of these guides. OK, anyway, though, let's go into if we add from pack file in data, I'm going to talk about the big ones that I want to talk about really quick. And they are going to be let's first start with the attributes I mentioned, like stock and stuff. I don't need it because I just copied the exact attributes in, I think, I can't remember, land unit table. Yeah, attribute group here. I just copied the chameleon stalkers. But other, and this is unit attributes groups is what um, grouping, so kind of the, the unit type that has it. But let's talk about the actual abilities in database. If we look for unit set to uh, unit junction, this, no, yeah, I think so. No, sorry, I, I already have that one. I meant abilities. Let's go. Oh, that's right. I want to do attributes first. OK, sorry. All right, so if we go to our unit attributes table, 
this gives us our attributes. So things, these are where they're named and you can see all the ones that already exist. Spell Mastery, Snipe, Stalker, Strider, Undead, Unspottable, Yin, Yang, etc. Those attributes are set here. These are the names of them. Then how you set them to, oh, and you can mouse over this to see what things actually affect it. So attribute to UI, battle context, effect bo bonus, ground type tables, special ability, unit attributes to groups and unit set unit of attribute. Those things are all use like call to this. So if you're creating your own, you can use this as a reference to um, make sure that you have something in all of those tables. But that's in, that's the names of them. But unit attributes to groups junction table and unit attributes groups table, let's see. This thing here is like, OK, the attribute and the attribute group. So if we look for, uh, like, say, stock, OK, um, we have, well, these are like the different, um, oh, so these are the different things that have like chameleon stalkers, uh, sepulchral stalkers. Anyway, anything that had stalker in it um, has this. But if I wanted to find like the attribute itself of stock, I can see all the units who have stock. Um, and so basically, I assign this attribute to that group, whatever attribute I want. Okay. So that's the attributes taken care of. And again, uh, you can see what the different attributes are. And they're separate from abilities. So now let's talk about the abilities. If we go to like um, unit special abilities table. Okay. So here, this actually like create, this is where you can create abilities. And they do a lot of different stuff, like how many uses they get, active time, recharge time, all that crap. There's a lot of stuff going on. Does it spawn a unit, etc.? This is how you create that ability. But these are also where those abilities are. So if you want to change an ability and make it different or better, you can go through and find the name of your ability. Then once you have your unit special abilities, you also have, um, let's see, unit abilities, uh, basic, I want to say, let's see, unit abilities table here, yeah. Now this is your basic stuff. So this just says like the name of it and its icon. So again, you kind of need that. So this is where you can find some abilities in their icons. Um, oh, those are the ability types. Let's see, abilities tables is what I meant. So here you have your, your name of your ability. Okay, the key of the ability and then like, what does it require? Does it, is it superseded by some other ability? Um, and then you have all of these different types here. So let's see. So like if you want to give a unit gore feast, right? So here you have gore feast and the icon is gore feast. So this is the ability that you want. Okay. Now this is our gore feast that we want to link to. So say we want to give it to some other unit. We have to then go to a table called um, land units to uh, unit abilities here. And this is where you link the ability, let's say gore feast, to a unit that you want. So let's say you wanted to give it to Tretch, since he's the first one here, you would just um, add another so I could like insert, potentially insert row, copy him. And then I search for Gore Feast under the uh, ability. So let's see. Gore Feast, copied it, and I'm going to give it to Tritch. So now he has that ability. And that's how easy it is to link the abilities. So it's, it's best if you're using ones that already exist, then it's super trivial. But if you're creating your own, there's definitely a lot to it, um, especially if it's like a projectile, like, oh, you cast a fireball, then you have to deal with it in projectiles as well. So it's a pain. Anyway. So um, that is kind of your basics of modding units, creating units. This thing is done and set and ready to be uploaded now. So hopefully that kind of helps you understand what it is that you need to do to create a unit um, and then see some of the additional things that you may need to deal with. And every little thing that you do can add more tables to it. Um, and it's just a matter of what it is that you're working with.
it's hard to cover everything, but I hope that this um, is at least helpful for you. I know it's a little long, but thanks for watching.